newer closing tradition, hopefully. Hobby hacks. Right. This is going to be our last little roundup before the end of the show. Mm-hmm. Quick little, uh, quick little tip you might want to share with uh, with the listeners. I'll, I'll go with my first one. Joe, I thought of this one just for you. This is a tip if you're doing. Your That's sub- good because I haven't got one. <laughs> <do it>, one. <laughs> tip for you, Joe, if you're doing your sub assemblies because I know you're a big fan. Yeah. Well, when I'm painting my Titan. <laughs> when you're painting your Titan, bear this one in mind. Uh, super glue. Use it for its weakness, which is the fact of it's not that strong. Might be called super glue. Unfortunately, on plastic models. It's not very super. This is where sub assemblies possibly get a bad rap, right? Because like when you finish painting the thing, you put it back together, it doesn't necessarily fit perfectly, whatever. What I like to do is if there's when I'm building a model and I know there's a part I'm gonna want to paint separately, I'll put it together with the tiniest, tiniest dot of super glue. And that way when I can build the model fully and I can prime it as normal. And then when I'm in the painting process down the line, even when I'm like halfway through, it's not like before I paint, I'll just snap that piece off and then I can put that on a separate little sub assembly now it's out of the way I can do what I need to do and then I can plastic glue it back on okay. after the fact okay I might give it a go yeah. maybe I'll give it a go and report back there you go find um, out next week how Joe got on with his uh, Titan next week I'm not doing that quick <laughs> what, um, what? you're not building your Titan in a week <laughs> <laughs> well no wait wait wasn't I I wasn't allowed, oh no I was allowed to use sprays with the Titan that was the thing of it being yeah okay, yeah, yeah, can use sprays that's fine yeah, yeah. Does anyone else have got any uh, any hobby hacks? Yeah, I do. I'm going to add a brother to your one, which is um, if you do use weak super glue, then you need to get mitre bond in your life. Uh, it's a building trade glue uh, that comes with an activator. So you can either have it weak by using a spot weld with the activator, the, the spray can activator, or if you leave it to air dry, the, the mitre bond, uh, it, it literally glues like cement and it will glue anything together super super strong it literally glues bricks together in the building trade so um i would recommend picking up some mitre there's bond. no way that it literally there's no way that there are tradesmen there with their just just spray it. kind of activate with their <laughs> bricks They're like don't need them all well, no the activator <laughs> makes it weaker yeah you, but then the 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 actual strength of the mitre bond i don't have an issue with the thing with me is that the the bottle and everything for, for miniatures i just oh you know what john throwing in another hobby hack right they sell little disposable like needle applicators. You love a, a, a third party bottle, yeah. Don't you? Yeah, <laughs> Maybe does. that's my thing. Yeah. But I always I always saw those on like Amazon and stuff, and I just assumed that like, oh, they probably won't be the right size or whatever. Apparently, super glue is just like a default industry Universal. standard size. Yeah. So you buy those little uh, those little needle applicators, they're they're brilliant. I don't they're think brilliant. it'll be mitre bond. Mitre bond, mitre bond's no, big old mitre bond. It won't work for mitre bond. I'm saying for the for the super yeah. glue. Yeah. That is why I don't like the mitre bond. It's the uh, it's not yeah, very precise. No, it's not yeah. as precise. But it 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 is mega for glue. Like it's the best super glue on the market. Like yeah, it comes from building trade. So if it can do what it does in building trade, it's fine on plastic and metal. Resin I like the uh, while we're all while we're all doing uh, super glue recommendations. I can't remember the exact uh, the exact thing, but there's a a lock type one, which has like a plastic sort of apparatus with it that lets you be a bit more precise and that one in particular just like the consistency of the glue and the strength the strength is quite good but the consistency of it uh and the way it applies is like perfect for miniatures yeah um i'll maybe drop a comment with the exact thing because i completely can't remember this at all i'll put it in the description we'll put put some links in for different ones or whatever yeah yeah but um but no yeah i've got one yeah i think this i don't think people i don't think a lot of people do this but um, uh, when you're applying like basin sand, basin material, mm-hmm. I don't use glue. I don't use like super glue. I don't use PVA glue. I don't, don't use, use glue. glue. People, people use like you people. don't use glue. I don't use glue. What do you use? I use he uses his most powerful tool. His mind. My mind. <laughs> <laughs> no, I use sellotape. No, I don't use sellotape. <laughs> um, so basically, I get I have a massive tub of. Um, Vallejo texture paint. It's really similar to like the, the GW texture paints. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. It comes in a huge tub though, rather than a normal little pot. Yeah, you've got to scoop it out, right? Yeah. yeah. So I thin that down. So it's kind of a little bit watery. It's almost becomes it's not like a paste like how you would put it on, yeah, yeah. how it's intended to be used. I kind of thin that down a bit. Um spread that over the base and then put the base and sand on that. Because what I found is number one, it just seems to stick better like it keeps the sand on more than 
PVA glue. That I, I just didn't have a good time with PVA glue doing it, to be honest. It always fell off. Mm. Um, and I also think because it's a texture paint, you get a bit more of a variety yeah, yeah. of textures because you've got the sand and the base material that you're adding on. And even though you're filling it down, the material, the base material, um, it's still going to have little lumps and stuff in it. Yeah, yeah. You get a bit more variety of your kind of the sand, even on a small base. Like on a bigger base, obviously, you can pick and choose. So the texture paste is helping it stick to the base. And then I presume you're priming over the top. As Prime well. over the top of it all. Yeah. Yeah. Prime over the top yeah. of it all and paint. Um, I just personally find it way easier to manage than I didn't have a, everything was always falling off when I was using PVA glue and, and I didn't I don't know everyone says to use it and no one seems to have a problem with it so I don't know what I'm doing wrong so um, but so, I've seen people use super glue as well I've, I've, had, what, I've had PVA fail on me a couple of times and I've always been able to draw it down to the fact of I tried to accelerate the drying with a hairdryer so I, 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 I'll hopefully answer this one for you because I've had I've had initially i've had some experiences with pva and i've i think i've found the solution i always scour the base with a knife first so i'll always the base i'll use a knife and cut loads of lines and you can use sandpaper as well or use or use it yeah but i find really like really going a bit heavy Mm -hmm. on the base to create like almost like little foundation runs on the base quite good you obviously put pva neat on the base yeah and then do your pull through the base material or whatever and tidy it up around the feet, around the rim, et cetera, et cetera. But I used to always then just put PVA straight over the top. The problem with that, if you can do the second coat or the coat over the top, is that the PVA it is plastic when it dries, essentially. It constricts, and what it does is it, if you ha- it rips the material off the base, basically. That's what I was getting. I was getting, like, number one, just as much sand wouldn't stay on. Yeah. So, like, yeah. it would just fall off. Yeah, yeah. And number two, yeah, it kind of maybe peels up. Yeah, because what it is is that the second layer that you put on, it constricts as it dries and lifts. Pulls it up. So always when you do that second layer, let it dry the PVA, the the sand onto the PVA and make sure you do scour the base with a knife to get those sharp sort of recessed lines and just create a bit of texture, a lot of texture on the base in between the feet or whatever. But do a 50-50 of PVA and water and it just dilutes it down enough that it sets like concrete, but but it doesn't rip and lift base material off the base mm. that's why i found so i do kind of like a middle ground of both of these i'll do the pva on the scuffed base and then i'll just go pretty heavy with the primer mm. i find that 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 works that also yeah. yeah 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 rattle the can other, primer the, I the, other, the, the other benefit to using the having the texture paint as part of the process as well is that it's a really it's, I always find it easier to, if a model's got a rock on it or something, I find it easier to blend the rock into the base with a texture paint yeah, no, than means, just yeah. with sand and glue yeah. and stuff. So having that as part of the process, you can like yeah. almost sculpt that onto the base while you're doing it. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah. Yeah, no, maybe I, just something for to you know people to try if they're struggling with yeah, the PVA. Good, like I, might I might try that. I might try it. Just see how it works. Good. Cool. Never, never used it. Where do you store your spray cans? I want to give you the answer that I think you want to make your point. <laughs> in the garage where I do my spraying. That's why a lot of people do the spraying. That's why I do my spraying. Mm-hmm. Don't want to spray my, you're not going to spray in your house. I'm not an no. absolute madman. Yep. I'm not going to spray in the garden. I, I don't, don't have a booth, so I do my, do my spray can no, no behavior I don't in, the get, in the garden. I don't want to get my Mephiston spray all over the grass in the garden. All right? yeah. I'm not a heathen. So I uh, might, might do it in the garage. You might leave your spray can in there. It yeah. might get cold. We live in the UK. It tends to be cold 99% of the time. Mm-hmm. We spoke about it before. What are the problems with spray cans? Weather, conditions, temperature, all factors in. Mm-hmm. You might be thinking, George, just store your spray cans in the house. And while you might be correct, if it's warmer, it generally behaves a bit better, right? Say it's freezing cold outside. You've got a room temperature spray can. Yeah. You're still going to be kind of testing the waters a little bit you might Mm -hmm. be uh raising the risk profile here's my little hobby hack for you right in your sink fill up with like lukewarm warmish not hot water leave a spray can in there for uh like five minutes bring the temperature of the can up when you go outside and it's freezing cold because the can's kind of like preheated a little bit i find that it doesn't cool down in the air as much i don't struggle with Mm -hmm. getting the sandy texture the dusty texture yeah this is i do this every time Mm mm-hmm and there is one problem to watch out for. Uh, mm-hmm. I, if you don't say it, I'm going to say it. Which I experienced. Uh-huh. I heated it up too much. Uh-huh. And when you heat it up too much, problems. It, it can, like the, the bottom basically like 
popped, popped like the bottom of the can, like popped out, like, like exploded like or like pro- bulged out, like bulged out, like it would have exploded if it if it broken, it would have just gone everywhere. Like it's like it like built up too much pressure. Uh-huh. So there is a middle ground. That, that wasn't really what I was trying to want to. Yeah. I go for like barely like warm, like not yeah. Yeah, like you wouldn't wash the dishes in, like not hot water. Yeah, like, but yeah. above room temp. So I did uh, when I first did it. I did it too much, and it just mm. went, and like I was like, "Oh my god!" And then I looked down, and it hadn't gone anywhere. And I was like, oh, god. <laughs> "So I'm going to add on to this. Say so doing it in water is all well and good, and it does work, hundred percent, like you like you said. A lot of people don't dry the cans properly after they've put them in the water, which I don't. Just just to preface this: do not get the top. No, 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 no. no, 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 no. Bo- yeah. I'm talking about the bottom. I'm okay, so. The, the can is made out of, uh, of metal that's folded into into a, a cylinder. Yeah, so there's obviously a seam line down uh-huh. that down that can. Um, that's what I'm talking about. Pop. Yeah. Out so what, what happens is whether you heat it, in, well, if you heat it in water, if you don't dry the cans properly with a towel afterwards, as and get all the water off, that seal um, on some cans, I don't believe it's it's welded. I believe it's just got some kind of like uh, crimp. bond, yeah. but a crimp and a bonding agent or something. The hot water, the bonding agent, it can it can perish the bonding agent and that's when you get like uh, hemorrhaging the paint out the bottom of the can sometimes um or the worst thing which is rust as well so Mm. cans do rust so do dry them like in a towel to to marry onto your hobby hack i have got something which which i would like to add on if you don't want to put them in water put them in your airing cupboard for about 10 15 minutes because your airing cupboard is naturally warmer anyway because it's got your boiler in it (laughs) <laughs> this, you know what this reminds me of? You know when you like put a beer in the freezer because you don't want to wait for it to get yeah. cold and you forget about yeah, it. Yeah. Like... It's, it's, yeah, yeah. The thing is, is it, I don't, it, how common are, are, are airing cupboards like a... A lot of houses they, do have I don't have cupboards. one, but are they like, is that a common thing? Uh, I've, I've both had tip, them and not had them. Tip, yeah. tip, well, yeah. If you do have an airing cupboard, yeah, I'd, yeah. I'd recommend doing that because, uh, to, again, just to give as much value as possible for the hobby hack, I actually use airing cupboard for warming cans, like you said, and I also use it for when I put my PVA on the bases and put sand on. I put the models in the airing cupboard, and they dry really quick because of the because of the. I love I love the idea of like really going to get a towel. That's what or I was something just being like full of space for it. <laughs> yeah, it's. Happened. I feel like most of your house is like that. To be fair, yeah, you can just go in any cupboard. Can you like blood angels there? You yeah. like come out of the shower, you've forgotten a towel, you like don't want to quickly grab it from the airing cupboard, and then yeah. just like the sand everywhere. Yeah. There's models of yeah. spray cans. No, I've got a tray mate. Put the tray in, on the shelf. Treats it like a pizza oven. Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. <laughs> he's got like a big it's, pizza bill when yeah. he's like putting a tray of like, cans yeah. in. <laughs> Getting in a like, Titan out the airing cupboard. Things models in there. Yeah. 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 yeah, no, but your airing cupboard does really, works really well for that as well. In um, summary, spray cans are a nightmare. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, Warm them a little bit before you use them in, in the winter. Yeah. Depths of winter. Solid, uh, solid hack. Uh, James, I believe you have one for this week. Yes, it's, uh, it, it's, it's a little bit, um, it's not so much a physical painting thing. It's more an equipment thing. So if you have a airbrush, if you, for any of you that airbrush, I'm sure a lot of you do, um, if you have a compressor that's got a tank, which is the bit underneath that holds all the air that's got the sensor where it fills up, it cuts off, the, the air motor cuts off when it fills up and then it, as it depletes, the motor engages, the, 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 the sensor engages the motor and it refills up the tank again. On the underside, there is a bolt on the underside. Oh, I know where this is going. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so many moons ago, uh, uh, I discovered this bolt and <laughs> uh, and uh, undone it and found a load of rust and, and stuff that came out of uh, water. Uh, I'm the, guessing, yeah, the water out of the tank. So obviously, oxygen has water in it or it has moisture in it. It's O2. Um, uh, We're back to change the science. Corner. If you if you <laughs> if you if you leave that in there, even if you vacate all the air from the tank uh, at the end of a session. If you leave that bolt in there, any air that is left in there will condensate, creating water. Um, it just uh, depends on the time of the year as well. Like if it's it humid, does, yeah, like you're, pulling, you're, 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 pulling, right. you're pulling air that is in the room and you're putting it into a small little tank and yeah. you're compressing well, you're it. You're compressing it, yeah. So it, it, yeah. And that motor does heat up the tank as well. Exactly. Bear that in mind, because it yeah. it's, it's a two-stroke motor. It warms yeah. up. The, so what you're talking about is on the bottom of the tank, turn, there is turn there's a little... Com- yeah, turn yeah. your compressor upside down. And on the underside of the tank, there's a normally it's brass, it could be silver. There's a there's like a like a, a nut that under unscrews. Get in the habit of taking that out at the end of a painting session. Obviously, use the dump valve on the side of the of the of the compressor to vacate all the air, or just take the line off so you can just get all the air out of it. 
Um, obviously, don't do that while it's full up with air. But that, of course, maximum pressurized. But that, of course, won't get any water out because that will sit in the bottom of the tank. Correct. So that nut, get yourself a bit of blitz. Yeah, oh, cheeky, cheeky blitz plug. Get yourself a bit of blitz or really absorbent paper. Stick that underneath. Stick that underneath the the the, the compressor once you've taken that nut out and leave it for like 15, 20 minutes. And what you'll find is when you come back is you'll find that you'll either have a very brown, rusty mark on the paper or if, or we if, had we had very if, different experiences because i also discovered this uh this little brass yeah. nut on the bottom um i wouldn't say that blitz would have been adequate i would have needed a five <laughs> gallon bucket because yeah. i was thinking oh I, I was occasionally starting to get a bit of water spraying through my yeah. airbrush yeah like was not, when it was empty i was like oh there must be a bit of water a, bad, a bit of water that's in a there. bad time the, because the moisture trap i would empty yeah right and i'm like there must be a bit in there I, I I literally it's like a comedy sketch. I've got it like upside down, and I like, I pull the valve thing off, and it just just yeah. fires water out. Lovely brown out. brownie orangey liquid. Cu- yeah, all yeah. rust all yeah. over your carpet. Yeah, yeah, great. Um, yeah, so it can be quite bad. I actually had so I I knew this for about a year or two, and it was like many years ago when I was first started teaching, and I went on a class. Uh, I taught class, and um, on the first day, I, I mentioned about the nut. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and um, one of the students was like, "Oh yeah, like I, you know, their their moisture trap on their compressor literally looked like a tango swimming pool because it had oh. like, it as like it was like half of it was like sloshing with like this rusty. So oh, it was, was going to take it out. He was going to undo it on, on at that point when I mentioned it. I was like, please don't undo it. Like please <laughs> just just don't do it. Like do not do it. Um and. Uh, on the day two, at the end of the day two class, he was like, oh yeah, I'm going to take that nut out before I go home. I was like, cool, yeah, okay, fine. It was so rusted that he couldn't get it undone with his hands. So he had like a, <laughs> pair, he had like a pair of pliers, um, put the pliers around this nut, tried to undo it. Obviously it gave some resistance. It went like that and the whole entire plate around the nut came off. Oh. Because it had rusted so much. Oh, yeah. So like um, if you've never seen that bolt or the nut underneath a tanked compressor, I really recommend at the end of a painting session, use the red valve, dump valve on the side to get all the air out or take the, take the hose off at the, at the contact point of the compressor, take that off. And then, and then obviously just get the paper, paper towel and undo that bolt at the bottom of the compressor. And I promise you, like you can get that bolt, put it on your desk, put it in a little Tupperware with your rear brush in some pieces after the session or whatever, just so that you always remember to put that back in. Obviously, if you don't put that nut back I think in. you can do it a bit more like periodically than that. I don't you think can you can do, do it like every single time. I'm, I'm, I'm all about building up building up repetition and building up building yeah, up Yeah, I mean, you could make it like a weekly or monthly. Yeah. It's going to depend on your climate as well because like at the end of the day, if, you, if, if you're in the States, you're in like a really dry, yeah, dry yeah. hot state, you're yeah. not probably going to have this issue. If you're no, in the UK where it's constantly wet, yeah. then and it's obviously more of a concern. Yeah. Yeah. I had once where my moisture trap was so full, I thought it was empty because it was clear. <laughs> It's not good, George. It's not good. Yeah, but no, you've got to think of it this way. Those compressors, look, they're made, they're made, they make thousands and thousands and thousands yeah. of them. They're not made from like state of the art, you know. No, they're the, still. The, the, it's it's yeah. still, it's going to rust quite easily. Like, you know, they're powder coated when they're sprayed. So like, they're not, they're not. I don't like, even know if they're powder coated on the inside. But t- no, they won't be on the inside. No. On the outside, they will be. But on the inside, it will just be the metal. So, so again, like that will rust very, very quickly. Maybe every day is overkill, but I definitely, if you get in that habit of taking that out at the end of a session, it's that, it's that first thing you do that, that at the beginning of the next painting session. And for the sake of bending down, putting it on, screwing it back up tight, it, it just, it will help that compressor last a lot longer. Just because you spent 50, 60 pounds, 60 bucks on it, whatever, blah, blah, just because you spent a little bit of money on it, it doesn't mean you shouldn't look after it, you know, and it will serve you a lot longer and you won't have a tango swimming pool in your, in your moisture <laughs> trap or, or make a massive stain on the carpet. So, so yeah, that's right. my hobby hack for the week. So I'm not big on fishing. Um, fishing. Fishing. Like yeah. carp? Yeah. Uh, you'll, you'll get the point. Catfish? Yeah, you'll get the get the point. If you do fish and you're watching this, I'm never so sorry. I'm not slating fishing. I'm just saying it, it is a comparison to what I'm going to talk about. Um, transfers. So I often see a lot of people do transfers and you have your bowl of water and you put your transfer in the bowl of water and it floats around. I used to do it in an upside down base. I would like fill up the base with a little bit of water and put it in there. Yeah. yeah. And then and then the paper, the transfer comes off the paper. Do you know what I done? I'm just going to throw it because I think it's funny. You know those um, like goo dessert pots that everyone has like 400 <laughs> of in their cabinet? I always used to use those for transfers. Yeah. <laughs> it's the one thing I ever found a use for them for. No, that's not the hobby hack. <laughs> yeah. Um, no. Uh, but so so whether you use any kind of solution or if you use Microsoft Microset, et cetera, um, adding a third party 
chemical or, 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 or thing into the mix doesn't normally have good results at the end of the process, if that makes sense. You get like lifting and bubbles, warping of the transfer, things like that. So not putting water into your transfer as much as possible is, is basically what I'm alluding to. Having a transfer float in a bowl and spin around for ages and then separate. And then, and then you, get torn in half when your tweezers pick it out. It's just a nightmare to, it's, it's an absolute, to scoop it out. Yeah, yeah. it's an absolute You get your brush nightmare. in there and you get it like perfectly on it and then it gets like clung to the side of the pot. Yeah. yeah. And then you like try to get it wet well, it just to like, get it again. It just wraps around the brush. It's the, the it, slap wristband thing again. It just wraps yeah, around yeah. the, the, you the get, brush. You, you're like, oh, I've thought ahead of this. I'm going to get like a pair of tweezers and then you like rip it in half. You've got to get a new one. So, sack the bowl off. Just get yourself a bit of Blitz. Not sponsored. Hope we are. Um, uh, <laughs> Blitz, we know you listen every week. Yeah, Blitz, yeah. Yeah. We're waiting for your email. I haven't picked yeah. up Blitz in a while. Yeah. So, wet some paper towel, thoroughly wet it, and then just cut the transfers out and sit them, sit the backing paper on the wet paper towel, and it will absorb into the backing sheet without adding loads of water into the mix. And then all you've literally got to do is just uh, just touch the top of the transfer with your finger, see if it shifts and moves on the backing sheet. As soon as you notice that it's loose, the paper towel has done its job. You can then literally get some tweezers. What I tend to do is I shift the transfer off a little bit just so that it's kind of like leaves a bit of the backing paper, get my tweezers, pick it up. And then what I'll do is get a dry bit of blitz and just just literally between my, two, my thumb and my forefinger, just squeeze a little bit not really hard just squeeze a bit and take any moisture off the transfer at all i'm gonna try it once and just rip, completely yeah. rip it. as soon as you said that you lost me being yeah. honest i'm like we've added a whole step here that's you've got to add the step because the thing is you're trying to remove water from the mix essentially so then basically the transfer is because all the water is doing the whole reason is purely to release the transfer the water does not is not invited to the party all right okay <laughs> all right so you literally the only, the only upside of water is it doesn't if, if you've got the surface that you're sticking the transfer too wet it means you've got working time. I don't. I find with the set though for Microsoft Microsoft, I find that it doesn't. You still get that working time. It doesn't. It doesn't. Yeah, I was going to say you do get a little bit. You do get some working time no, with it. No, but it's doing the same job. I'm saying if you don't use Microsoft Microsoft because yeah, they're not yeah. like necessarily no. required, especially for a flat surface. No, no, like, I, I agree. Uh, the, the, the only thing I would say is that is that by taking out as much water as possible or all of it, if you can, it's literally a case of then there's no there's no sort of. Uh, third party involved in the chemical reaction. I think in this two. example, you're using Microsoft, Microsoft. Gotcha. Like, yeah. Like, I mean, that personally, I would, I, I, I use them on everyone. Yeah, anyway, I, yeah. I think the biggest thing them. from what you said is stop dipping your transfers in water to let them separate. Just yeah. put them on a bit of paper yeah, towel. Bit, bit of After way, that, that if you've got your own method for transfers, like more power to you. But like that first step is like the big you just 90, 99% of the hack for me. The water is purely to remove the transfer from the backing sheet. That's it. It's that it's that magical thing where it releases the transfer. That's all that matters and that's all the water is used for. Like, I, I can't stand it when I, I've, I've done it in the past and I've had a bowl and the transfer paper's fallen off and the transfer is like, you know, like one of those, what, what's one of those little bugs that sits on top of the water and, uh, and skates, pond skate, whatever it is. It's like <laughs> literally like one of those things just sitting on top of the water. Why like, do transfers like, like inconsistently like sink or float as well? Yeah, weird. They're just weird little things that we'll never understand. I think it's a complete it's lottery. Like a, whether it's gonna, I'm always like, okay, I need like one of these transfers. So... I'll cut four of them off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, but yeah, just use a uh, damp bit of paper towel, sit the transfer on top of it. It'll absorb water through the backing sheet. Transfer's loose. Job done. Like, it's just so much easier. No fishing. Um, and, uh, and Also, I find that like, I can do other stuff because I've got like a minute for it to like absorb, right? Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I'll be like, oh, I'm about to put the transfers on. So I'll cut out the transfers that I need. I'll put them on my damp piece of kitchen paper and then like, right, okay. I've got a minute to like get my surface ready, get my microsoft, get my microsoft mm. out. But that's By the, the time I'm thing. done like prepping the surface, the transfer is like ready to go. Yeah. It's just sat there on your paper towel, literally ready for you, rather than having like floating around in a bowl of water. And then you've finally got it out of the water and now the microsoles dry on the model. <laughs> so you've got to like reapply it to that, but I'm holding a transfer with this. And then. <laughs> the, the other thing as well is that think about it like from a focus perspective as well. You're not, you're not splitting your attention between the bowl, making sure it hasn't sunk or it's not, released in the bowl and swimming round or whatever blah blah your your attention is a lot more uh strong you're basically just focused on this specific thing you know you haven't got to look at the transfer you know it's done its job and it's just sitting there waiting for you to be ready to use it if that makes sense so um so yeah so stop stop putting transfers in big bowls of water or whatever those things were that you said stop or a little fishing. ramekin yeah, yeah. Ramekin, yeah yeah so yeah, so yeah stop that, fishing. that's that's the hobby hack stop fishing yeah <laughs> we're well, real concise hack there yeah, yeah. Right on brand for us. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, do you want me to start with this week? Let's do it. Yeah, go for it. This feels like 
a fairly mundane pick, right? But this, I don't know, this blew my mind. So hopefully there's someone else <laughs> out there who will agree. You know, I kind of hope, even though I'd love it to be so useful for loads of people, I kind of hope that there's something now that's blown your mind and everyone that listens to it goes, what a load of problems. <laughs> <laughs> this guy didn't even know. Yeah. You know when you see, right, like especially on Box Art Basin, they've always got those like really nice like little rocks, like little bits of slate, things like that. Like mm. Basin mix is something that I've always experimented with a lot, like different sized grains of sand and different substrates and things like that, texture paste, what have you. I've always had my like go-to basin mix with like little rocks and stuff in there, but I never, I always really quite like the look of like the tiny little bits of slate. Mm -hmm. And for ages, I was like buying like different packs on like eBay of like little bits of slate and stuff, and it was never the right size until it occurred to me you can just get like regular garden slate that you use for yeah. landscaping <laughs> and you can just put it in like a Ziploc bag and get a hammer and just, just hammer beat the hell out of it until you get the size you want. Uh, but it, now with that, like, you know, there's like one, one like shard of like garden slate. That's enough to do like 50 bases. Yeah. It's, it's, it's almost like the moment when humanity discovered fire. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, look, I, I've done that before. Yeah. I have honestly just reverted back to like getting some pre-mixed basin material from uh, from eBay and stuff that has a little a few little rocks and stuff in it. The the slate thing I have done and I had mixed results if I'm honest. I was either like I don't know if I just don't get it like exactly. You don't what understand you're to do. hitting things with a hammer. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I just don't get it, but like I either couldn't. I would go like too soft that it wasn't breaking properly. Or I was like pounding it into dust. Like it was like I <laughs> no, couldn't. No, get, no middle there. Just I couldn't. I'm just I know I know I desk. Just keep going. <laughs> Not in the garden. I was in the garden. I didn't. I wasn't in my hobby desk. I was in the garden because I thought I don't know what this is going to be like. I don't know if it's just going to fly everywhere or what. Like, and I was like <laughs> hammering away, and I just ended up with like dust, four decent bits, and then like just like yeah, just like little ground into like dust i mean i'm not gonna lie like when you when you go for it like there's some you've got to do some picking through right yeah a little yeah bit. it's not yeah. like i do this and everything's just this like perfectly pristine like even symmetrical little one millimeter piece yeah no i get that but then what i'm saying is like for the work put in if some geezers already <laughs> doing it on ebay yeah. for me i'll just buy that <laughs> well there you go that's our hobby hack for this week Thank there's you. two kind of two two hobby hacks really two hobby hacks this yeah. week yeah. either do it or don't do it yeah. two hobby hacks. <laughs> well we hope you took something from that james far away so this one is uh is a, a, a freak discovery that um saved my bacon on a, on a numerous occasions um so so yeah um <laughs> Sorry. It was the way you said it. It was the way you said it. Save my bacon isn't even that outlandish, but the way you said it just made me laugh. Sorry. Oh, it's okay. It's all right. Save so, my bacon. So, <laughs> so anyway, um, so with we're talking about spray cans, obviously using them at a decent distance and all of that. So when I was a lot younger, um, I used to spray can too far away and it was too cold. And you can imagine the 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 model was more texturized than the surface of the moon. It was literally like full of craters, divots, all those kind of things. And obviously back then once that you've done that you can't really do much to the to the to the model that's it you know I have to strip them and take that off and restart again um so it always bugged me and i was like how can i if i if i don't have a really bad finish as in like maybe it's a little bit rougher and that can happen if the can's sitting for a long time on a shelf and you don't shake it too much before you use it, it comes out way more powdery just well if because... you read the instructions on the can it does say to shake it for two to three minutes Yes, and correct. if you're a real freak like me, you will sit there and start a stopwatch on your phone. Like <laughs> I, mean, I mean, Olympic can can shaking times have never been sort of like a topic or thing that I <laughs> want to do. But 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 with that being said, if the can has been sitting on a shelf for quite a considerable period of time, and you don't shake it to enough, or for example, the temperature is, is not correct or whatever, or the distance from the object is not enough. Long story short, if you get some form of subtle texture from the spray can, then I have the tool for you. Um, I used to get. A, either a soft or firm cheap 39p boots toothbrush that like you wouldn't put near your gums because it would rip into shreds not just yeah. any toothbrush a toothbrush specifically from boots that yeah. specifically cost yeah, yeah. 39p hey, you, can, specifically you can will rip go gums Poundland shreds. Savers Superdrug wherever your, your your retailer of choice your drugstore yeah, of choice your yeah. well, not a drugstore George yeah. uh, but like, you can get, a drugstore it is a drug yeah. pharmacy yeah. but yeah okay it's, but, he's straight as he calls it a pharmacy it's a pharmacy sorry yeah, yeah. but uh, you can go the to, American you, viewers drugstore you can go to any of those and uh, get yourself a really cheap 
toothbrush that you wouldn't like you know you know if you go on holiday and you forget your toothbrush you go to shops and you just find like the one you can just use because you need one really quick the one from like the hotel lobby yeah, the hotel lobby yeah. next to like some charm that, bracelets that, that is the that is the toothbrush that you want to acquire um and, and uh what you can do with it is you can lightly buff the model and it and if it's a soft toothbrush it won't scratch like cause like scratching on the model but what it will do is the is the is the movement of the brush any of those little particles that are like almost stuck to the paint, but they're not properly secured. It will just take them off and actually smooth the finish of the model. Where this goes up to 11 is when you buy an electric toothbrush. Oh my God. Yeah. Okay. And then you do it with an electric toothbrush and it almost polishes the roughness off of that badly primed or uh, I'm just imagining model. you there with like your car washing it with like a buffing wheel and you're like, hang on a minute. This is a light bulb moment. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was a very, very big light bulb moment. It works. I love the idea of him using the toothbrush on the car. That is funny. I mean, they, the, and he gets the buffing wheel for his models. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the wall just explodes. Yeah, um, no, but you can use uh, either a, a, a really cheap, uh, soft or firm toothbrush, whichever you prefer and whichever you want to use. But when you use an, a, a, an old electric toothbrush, because what happens is an old electric toothbrush runs out of battery or the battery doesn't last as long. So you can just literally use, keep your old one, don't throw it away or get rid of it. And then whenever you need to, you have that mistake or, or problem, you just get that out, stick it. You know stick what? You can change on the head on a toothbrush. I was going to say, yeah, you yeah. can change the head well, on a toothbrush. Well, you can do that. Yeah, I'm use just your saying. Main one. Use your main one. You main one, you're getting dual use. Out use your Oral B toothbrush that you got for Christmas. Just that get was a separate head. Quid. Don't confuse the heads, though. Don't do one. <laughs> yeah, like red teeth. Yeah, yeah. Like, Especially if you yeah. use like, well, if you're one of those people that uses like the charcoal toothpaste and it's like already black. Yeah, you're like, yeah. you're looking at the toothbrush. <laughs> you're looking at the two heads and you're like, is it, is it Abaddon black or is it charcoal toothpaste? Yeah. Who knows? Yeah, but no, it, do, it does work. And the thing is, because, because um, it's, you're not going to be, f- physically scrubbing it with the, with the hand action yourself, obviously, if the electric toothbrush is doing it, then only really you've got to just move it without putting force on it. Um, and it does actually work. Cool. Uh, and have you experimented with different compounds in this? Uh, this no. I'm, You're just going in raw with get, the toothbrush? Don't get that, that into it, George. Jesus. Yeah. Yeah, I'm like, imagining we're like, he's like, hmm, what if the toothpaste is slightly abrasive? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh my God, what if you've got charcoal toothpaste and <laughs> used it on the model? I bet that would work. Uh, uh, find out in future episodes. No. We're not, we're not <laughs> I'm going to test that. No, no, no. I'm going to come back. I'm going to come back next week. Yeah. And but, that. but as a really good hobby hack, uh, electric toothbrush, if you do get a slightly, slightly rough finish on there. Get some it, turtle wax. It, 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 well, you don't have to put wax on it. <laughs> but like, it, it, you literally, you literally can buff the model and it does work and uh yeah i i've it's it's saved me a few times when i've used that so so yeah so i, I didn't like, think he was going when he said the toothbrush thing i didn't i didn't know where he was going to be honest but yeah fair, I thought fair he, I, I, the only thing i could logically think of was that he was gonna like flick paint in the model or something oh, oh you, like you can you can yeah, yeah. you can do that i suppose yeah but i prefer it's an extra use that your toothbrush i'll tell you what if you use, maybe one. if you're doing like angron or something you use the electric toothbrush to do that oh yeah you just, 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 yeah, just splats it everywhere yeah, yeah. brilliant so I wanted to try for the first time doing like flagstone, like cobblestone bases. I'm, I'm terrible at basing. Like it's not, I, I like doing like plain, simple stuff. I enjoy doing basing, but it's not something that I consider myself like particularly good at, especially when it comes to scratch building, <laughs> especially when it comes to scratch building stuff and not just like using like product with your sand or bit of GW terrain or whatever. So I... Uh, following the tutorial I got some mill apart and I like rolled it out flat and I like cut little stones out of it put it on the base and I'd done that and I was pretty happy with it and then you know when you're not happy with something in the moment and then like, like four days later you're like this, this isn't it this is not it chief so what I'd done was because there was just a bit too thick that was my main like gripe with them and it wasn't like very flat like they were sort of almost sort of bowed where I'd like rolled them out it was like thicker in the middle and like a bit flat on the edges almost so what I'd done was I got uh, it was already on a, like a plinth and I literally masked it all off around the edge, put it in a vice, and I got like a you know, like a wood plane. <laughs> yeah. And I literally like shaved it down flat. Yeah. But by that point, I had this just like perfectly flat, level, nice piece of mill apart that I could just start carving into. So this made me think. Basically, basically, it's just a hack for just like doing flagstone bases or whatever. Instead of sculpting with the mill apart like while it's still soft, like all logic would tell you to do. Yeah. If you roll out like between like two bits of baking paper, like as if you was making like some sort of festive cookies or whatever. I ice him for your cake. <laughs> there you go. Let it set. And you've just got this like wafer of miller putt. Stick that down to your base. You can just get your hobby knife and you can just start carving at it. It's going mad. And it like a, a scalpel blade just like flows through it like perfectly. And you can just start like carving bits out as Could if I, it's stone. It looks great. Could I tack something on? Go that? for it. If you get some silicon chocolate molds off of Amazon, I know you've got to buy something for it, but if they're really cheap. 
some liquid plaster. You pour that in, and it makes the perfect sort of tiles for basing. Once they're set, you just break them up with a hammer, and you get some really, really cool broken tile slabs as well. And again, it's perfect thickness and everything. Really I'm getting good. some throwbacks to that hack we done where I was smashing a slate with a hammer. Yeah, well, I didn't have a very good time with that. No. Uh, the, <laughs> smashing the slate with a hammer. So yeah. I'll mm. be careful with this. Uh, of recent, I have had uh, a miniature building and cleaning epiphany and discovering Tamiya sanding foam, like sponge blocks or sanding foam or sanding sponges, has literally been the greatest light bulb golden moment in miniature building and cleaning I've I've had in twenty plus years of making and painting models. Or Do you want to just like, explain what those are for the Tamiya sense? make these like amazing sponge like they're almost, it's almost like a sponge emery board. That's the best way for me to explain it. So I use I use a lot of really worn soft emery boards to like do the final polish on the model. Like I've got an emery board that I've probably had for like ten years and it's just it's still got a little bit of a faint Rough. 10 years it's, it, yeah it's, it takes when you're doing soft yeah, plastic one model a year yeah so it's true it's not brand new it's true yeah um, but um, I've got rid of my emery balls completely since using the Tamiya uh, sanding sponges or sanding foam whatever you want to call it um, they're, they're really good and they come in a whole variation of grits all the way from 2000 right down to like 300 or something like that so you've got a really good scope of different grit you can work on resin with them you can work on plastic with them I've been using like a typically sort of like 600, 1000 and 2000 grit on them. And they're like, you still remove the mold lines as you normally would. Um, the moment I started using them was actually when I painted my new, the new Dante, like there's an, on the knee, he's got these really, really, uh, really sort of, uh, frustrating sort of like joins on the knee where it joins to the sprue. And obviously for the golden angle, it's like right there. Like, so I was like smoothing it down normally. I found it really difficult. Um, and I found these Tamiya sanding sponges and just used them on that. And it literally polished the plastic like to a pristine finish. Um, almost like you can't tell the difference between, you can't tell the difference between, between um, a bit of the model that's just fresh plastic and also a bit that where the sprue joined. So yeah, so I definitely recommend you try it. If you're looking for that polish to polish the plastic, Tamiya sanding sponges or sanding foam is like amazing. Like How amazing. are we, what are we talking price wise here? Because I've got, I've got like, I just buy like multi pack nail files. Yeah, yeah. And then I cut them down. Yeah. So I have like, so you're constantly getting like fresh bit on the corner kind of thing. I mean, I just buy sandpaper. Sandpaper. Like, you can buy 2000 sandpaper. Sandpaper's, sandpaper's, sandpaper's fine, sandpaper's but it's just fine. like, I just find it easier to have like a, a thing. Like a, the thing the, I like, the reason I like. And they're softer than using sandpaper. I feel like it, it, is, it yeah. goes over the model, like the bumps and everything of the model a bit with, better. With, the reason with, I like. Using the sandpaper because this I'll do is like the same grit, like two, three, four, all the way up to like two thousand grit. The reason I like the sandpaper instead of the boards is sometimes you can get into even tighter gaps yeah. than you couldn't because obviously you can just tear it and make a smaller piece. Yeah, yeah. You can get in pretty much anywhere. The sponge is really good because you can fold it as well, which is quite good. It retains its shape. It's it's the, the, I it has changed the way I build what, what, models. What was the price? What's the damage. What, it varies. Uh, some of them are a couple of pounds. Like if you buy a multi pack, you can probably get like various different grits so they come individually like they come one, individually one, yeah. so grit, per one grit per pack yeah but you get and you can cut it like cut it with some scissors or cut it with a knife and it will literally just into a section that you want to use um but yeah like cut, like between three to five to six pounds a pack depending on the grit and then you can get a multi-pack which is like got like various different grits in it as well so yeah they're really good like, I re i'd recommend them like massively um it's literally changed the way i clean models i've got one that i learned from james of all people this is Something that I didn't know bothered me until I saw someone else not. Like I saw someone else had solved the problem, but I didn't know I had. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. James always take, you know, like an airbrush. You've got like the, the air cap, like around the needle. So not like, I don't mean the nozzle. I mean like just the little protective. Yeah, he takes it off. James takes his off and he's just got like bare exposed needle. Yeah. And I always thought that that was like asking for trouble. I'm like, this is not a problem. Like there is no issue with having the air cap on. Why would you add this risk factor? But then... After I'd like seen him do that, and I went back home and I was doing some airbrushing, I realized how much paint like a cruise just clogs on and that like, thing. Yeah. Just, you end up with eventually this like sort of like droplet that's like waiting to get like launched sure. at your model. Yeah. And like a big gob of paint fire. Because right? what I used to do was before I got um, a HS Infinity, which is the one which has like the tiny little almost non existent air cap, just this little bit of, bit of metal. I used to buy those and put them on all my airbrushes, even though I didn't have like the expensive one that came with it. And then I finally got an infinity and it like came with it. I'm like, right, brilliant. 
Mm. But even now, I'm like, no, you know what? I'm taking that one. I'm going <laughs> full bare needle. Yeah, I I guess because James taught me how to use an airbrush, that's one of the first things he's told me. So I've yeah. always done that as well. However, I did drop it. Yeah, there is that. I did drop it, completely bend the needle. Yeah, there is that. Like, to I don't right think you've angle. even got... You don't realize how fragile an airbrush needle is until you've exposed it because yeah. you haven't even got to drop it. Even like putting it in um, your little like cleaning pot thing, even just like hitting the bit of rubber a bit too hard. Like, yeah, they're such finely precise, they're such fine and precise, like machined parts. Like, even if you can't see a kink in it or a little bend in it, mm. like you will notice when you're spraying it. Yeah, that is just the one caveat. I'll there is a risk factor involved because, like, again. Replacing a decent airbrush needle, replacing the needle is fairly cheap, I suppose. Like but, 12 quid. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, you know, you'd rather not, wouldn't you? 12 quid. It's not just that. It's like the inconvenience of like, if you haven't got one like spare laying around, it's like, oh, now I've got to order one. Now I've got to order one. Oh, there's a minimum order cost. Yeah. I've got to pay for shipping. I've been there like trying to bend it back. Oh, I've bent it back. Like, you can do it. Yeah, I know, but it. it's never. If it don't, right. If you've completely mullered it, uh, yeah, I'm sorry. You need a new needle, but like I've had. Little, I did like, straighten. It. I did manage to straighten it out again when I did mine, but it was like wavy. Do you know what I mean? Like, wavy at the end of it. It wasn't like no. I've had a couple of times where I've had like a tiny little like you know when you have like a cheap synthetic brush and it gets that little like hook on the end. Yeah, I've had that and I've been able to straighten that out before, but it's it's not ideal. I feel like if I got that, I'd just leave it. You just leave it. Well, yeah. you're just gonna have it. You just spray your model like perpendicular. And it just does like a full ninety yeah, degree. Yeah, I'll just be doing like. Yeah, I'll just set up a different aim. I'm just, that's what I'll probably that's do. That's so unpredictable. Because then you can like, if you, if you spit the needle, now all of a sudden it's firing up. Yeah. Oh, you got to adapt. you got to adapt. <laughs> Improvise, adapt, don't become. Yeah. I've got one based on a conversation that I had with James, Mr. Hobby Hero. How doing this how, hang on. How has this got turned around on me? It's yeah, it sounds like it's going to be a dig as well. Yeah, I know. This is a dig. So... If First, he mentions Mitobond, I'm, I'm walking off set. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah. I'm quite late for something else. So apparently this is the thing that people don't know. So I feel like I should share it with the people. Okay. Might, might be in their best interest. I went to, uh, to James's gaff to, to paint with him for the first time, right? We do some airbrushing and he's like, oh, oh spray, I know some, say. spray some cleaner through it. Yeah. Right? And I'm like, I said, oh, where's your water? And he's like, what do you mean? And I'm like, well, do you not dilute your cleaner? And he's like, you don't have to dilute your cleaner. And I said, but have you not seen on the back of the bottle where it says Didn't read dilute 50-50 it. with water? <laughs> Don't read it. Apparently, I, and in fairness, I didn't know this at first either. You know, like the run of the mill, like Vallejo yeah. cleaner that everyone uses or even other brands, I'm pretty sure it's the same stuff. Dilute, dilute with water. Do you know what? I, 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 I didn't I, know that. I've never, ever, 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 ever seen anybody ever dilute it. No, I've in either. every... In every person that I know, every video I've seen, every I've never seen anybody. It's literally because of the design of the bottles, those two hundred mil ones, or even the the smaller fifty or hundred mil, whatever they are. You just people just use it neat. Mm. So instinctively, for all these years, I've been using it neat. And I don't know. I I generally I wouldn't I wouldn't dilute it down. Being being honest, I just wouldn't. I just use it as. I it thought is. you were gonna say, not from like that's how it's supposed to be used, but more of just like a cost saving. Both. Like you well, can, oh, yeah, yeah, that's the main reason I'm yeah. gonna now do it. I yeah. hadn't even thought of it. Do you know what's better as well? I don't know why I didn't do this, and maybe everyone else does this, and I'm just a complete idiot. But like before you start cleaning it out, just spraying loads of water through the airbrush just to clean out like as much paint as possible, and then going with the cleaner, which is diluted with water straight into the cleaner cup. Cleans it fine. I've been doing it, I figured or, this out like two years ago. Or I've never had a clog or an issue with it not cleaning. It's mm. definitely supposed to be that put way. Put water in the airbrush first, fill up a little bit in there, and then pour some cleaner into it. So then you're diluting by using less of the cleaner that you pour the bottle into some water that's in the airbrush. That's just diluting it. Though. That's just that's exactly, exactly what I just exactly, said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Exactly. yeah that's, the, that's the, yeah, for anyone who didn't know what diluting it meant. <laughs> Just covering all bases. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Thank you for explaining <laughs> to the listeners what that means. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, to be fair, I'd never done it. That's quite a good little tip, actually. Yeah, isn't it? Yeah. I'm going to do that. Yeah. That's, not... that's just built Have in you, do now. Do you use I the Viejo? Like, yeah, 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 yeah. Look on the back of the bottle. Read the, read the fine print. That's a good tip. I, I, yeah, I've never done that. So I'm going to yeah. give that go. I won't be because I've just always done it that way and I'm 
used to using it that way and I didn't read the back of the bottle. Is that I like a flex? I, like, yeah. don't want to brag, but... Uh, no, I just, I, I just, I'm you. so used to, it's so just, used yeah, to the I've process. Al- I've always done it as well, but I'm like, oh yeah, that makes perfect sense. Obviously, well, the thing is that certain paints are more stubborn to like clean out the airbrush and stuff. And I find that even, even with it not diluted, sometimes you do need to really aggressively... But it's a volume it. thing, right? Because this is why I spray loads of water through it before I even clean it at all. It, you're not going to like waste that much cleaner. Like I, I presume as well, even if you don't want to be... Even if you're saying like, oh, I don't want to dilute it, it's you wouldn't like pour like loads of it in, would you? Like you wouldn't flush out the airbrush with like loads. You'd be getting through cleaner like like there's no tomorrow. So I've I feel got like, a feeling you're going to say, yeah, you do that. Yeah, I've done that. Probably he does do that. But if you're a normal person, you're probably trying to be a bit like sparing with your cleaning. But do you know what it is? It's because right? it's because ev- again, everyone that I've seen use it and anyone that I've seen use it has never diluted it. So for me, it's like, well, that's just that's that's just what. Everybody A does or B, that's what... Even if you're not going to dilute it, I think, yeah, flushing it out with loads of water. Mm-hmm. Oh, I do use water. Just yeah, I've got one of those, um, uh, almost like a ketchup Like a dropper bottle. bottle. Ketchup. No, not a dropper bottle. Don't get your hopes up. Uh, the ketchup bottle. Ketchup bottle you, with, yeah, the, with yeah, a big... With a hose uh, on with it. With a hose on it. You just yeah, squeeze yeah. that and it just, that, that flushes yeah. out quite well. Um, good tip. It's a good tip. Yeah, it's a good tip. Turned on. This is one that I don't know how never came to me. Um, I was doing like a mini conversion at the minute. Yeah. And I needed some green stuff to fill like a, an arm joint for a Marine, right? Mm-hmm. So like I've cut the arm so that I can repose it. Yeah. But that means that now it doesn't fit perfectly into the yeah. shoulder, right? So you've got to green stuff the rubber suit. So I'm green stuff in the suit. It's going to get covered with a shoulder pad so it hasn't got to be like the super clean joint. I didn't realize green stuff is a fantastic glue. Because <laughs> <laughs> whenever I've sculpted stuff before, I've done it pre-attaching it to the model. Mm-hmm. But now this has opened up all these opportunities for me because I'm thinking... Whenever you've got like something that's got like a weak contact point or like you can't quite get it to fit right, using green stuff to help you make it stick because it's like so sticky, but like it's got a lot of immediate strength. Like when you touch it, it's not like you've got to like sit there and hold something and wait for it to glue and hope it bites and hope it doesn't break later. Like it's such a strong joint. It's it's like a stronger version of blue tack. Yeah. Basically, yeah. Yeah, like specifically from back in the day with more OG kind of metal models. But as you're touching them, because it's smushing and it filling conforms. the gaps. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it does work. It does work really well. See, I, I, I always used to pin stuff first because the thing is, with I used to always pin first because then that way, you, it, the, what would happen? I find green stuff when it cures. If you do that and it cures, it's very much like a hot glue gun. It's great when you first try and contact something, but once it dries and sets snaps and breaks quite easily right uh or comes off very easy just like a hot the glue from a glue gun if you put it on a surface it will you can pin it off quite quick and quite easy um so i used to put a pin in and pin the arm on or pin the thing on that would give me like a, a bar that's in between the two parts that you could almost like wrap like a c shape of green stuff over it yeah so then it would like hold to the bar as well yeah um but yeah you are right like you can just use it as a, like a, a as a re- it's really good for like just posing models and holding it together and just tiny little bits of green stuff to just hold the bits together and check a pose. I mean, I've used it a ton for sculpting and gap filling and yeah, stuff. Yeah, I've just yeah. never like considered using it to hold something together. Yeah, you yeah, know what I mean? Really I always good. think of like, okay, I've glued it together already with plastic glue or, yeah. what you know, super yeah. glue, whatever. And then I fill a gap. But I've never thought about just <laughs> skipping the middle step and just smashing them together. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah Not sure how well it will hold up over time, but it's it, it's opened up the opportunity to like... I think it'll become even, quite brittle after yeah. time. But I meant in the sense of like, even if it's just a temporary joint, like yeah. considering that as an option, I think is uh, a yeah, yeah. quite useful. Yeah, yeah. It's I'm interested good. to see uh, to see what happens with that because it's yeah. green stuff is uh, it's quite a fun little uh, fun little thing to play. Great. Hard to master, hard but, to master. But yeah. once once you got it, it's it's great. Yeah, yeah, really good. cool. My one this week. It's not really a hack per se, more a, more an admission that I was wrong on something. Oh, it's even better. That's, yeah. that's better. But it is a hack because. Hopefully, there's someone else out there who's in similar mindset of me. Maybe you can uh, use this. We've spoken to death, both on air and off air, about using uh, brushes to base coat like sand and stuff like that mm-hmm. when we're doing the bases. I always say I like to paint the bases separately, which I will stand by. However, the reason I like to paint them separately was always so I could spray them with the airbrush or with a rattle can, whatever. And then I found this brush that I didn't know I had that was like a terrain dry brush, like massive thing, like flat one, not, not a round brush, like a flat sort of thing you'd like cut in to paint a wall with. Not quite as big. <laughs> so you have been doing some DIY then. There, there you go. Yeah. Uh, I found that and I, for whatever reason, just decided randomly during my basing woes for these Black Templars to, to use that because I couldn't be bothered to get all the airbrush out because it's packed away now. And uh, 
Yeah, it turns out it's actually pretty quick doing that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Rather than having to set the airbrush up. And or like go outside to spray something and now oh, it's raining, I'll have to do it in half an hour. Or, oh, the airbrush is packed away, let's get out the compressor and hose and clean it all and put my mask on and all that. So, uh, yeah, yeah, basing with brushes. I'm coming yeah. around on it. I'm still not sure how I would work that into having the model on the base because you can't really use as big of a brush, right? Oh, well, you can if you're careful. Yeah. You can if you're careful. It's James's whole thing is get tidy with a big brush and you'll be you'll be laughing with a smaller one so mm -hmm. i think you should try on what you should do is get one of your competition black templars dry brush it put them <laughs> <laughs> so, might might have bonded it to the base yeah well like solid yeah. solid connection so, yeah no, no, no activator it. might have bonded it and then Force yourself to dry brush the base in with the biggest brush you can find. And you've got to be tidy and not ruin the model. That's what I think. You That's your say. Christmas challenge. Yeah. Thank God those models are varnished. <laughs> <laughs> Have you got any tips for what's your favourite brush look, to use? Look, that sort of stuff? It is the season of giving. Okay. And and I've been saving two up for this episode because I've got... Two more hobby hacks. I've got two more hobby hacks for you. Three hobby hacks. Three hobby hacks. Episode. Yeah. Go on yeah. Then. It's not only is it the, 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 the month of red, it's the sanguine ala, but you're getting... You're getting three, three for one. Three yeah. for one. Yeah, yeah, that's the best deal ever. Um, in answer to your one, yeah, but but with using a brush or basin, yeah, like I tend, I like using really sort of like tactical dry brush with like a really small brush to like do that on on bases. If I have stuck the model to the to the base, if I have done the bases separate, then yeah, like you said, those big flat ones are actually really really good. Um, but uh, the two hobby hacks that I've got for you uh, and for everyone this 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 month on this episode are hopefully going to help with a few things so um I, we, I, we, I get asked quite a bit about like liquid mask and like and like using that to like sort of section an area off or, or do this or whatever um and i've actually been using cling film quite a lot cling film mm -hmm. yeah i've been using cling film quite a lot recently so never uh, heard someone so, use that in so, that context yeah. in the states is that saran wrap i, think I don't called? know what it's called plastic wrap whatever plastic you use for the kitchen wrap, for yeah. ceiling food so so I've been using cling film because it because of that because of that property that it has where it clings to the object that it touches if that makes sense. Um, if I needed to do like a shoulder pad or like so let's just say I you know uh, oh, yeah I wanted to paint a shoulder pad. This might color. be genius. Yeah. So oh, let's genius. hear them out. This could so, go. No, this, I think this is genius. <laughs> so, so what you do is you get some cling film, you wrap the model, and then using a, a clay shaper which has got the rubberized end. Just sort of push it in. Yeah, you push it in with the clay shape. A little bit of water on the clay shape so it doesn't stick to the cling film. And you can, put, the cling film will adhere to the surface that you're putting it around and cover all the areas that you don't want. And then you spray it. Um, you spray it with the airbrush or spray it with a rattle can or even even paint it with a brush without worry of over, over painting or whatever. And then you just pull the cling film off. And the cling film doesn't stick to the model and damage any paintwork that you've done, but it protects it. Why do you um, prefer that to the liquid mask? Just for time purposes, and like if you don't get all the liquid mask off, you know, like and you've you got drying times. You've got drying well. times. That stuff. I've always had trouble with like liquid mask stuff, or like even blue tack and stuff, like pulling paint off. Like I've always had that. I like yeah. the Vallejo liquid mask. What I found with it though is you can't just like put one coat on and let it dry and then rip it off because it's going like like to start blue, crumbling. Is that in yeah, like yeah, the blue? Yeah, it's, it's, it's literally liquid latex. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, but you have to build up quite a few coats to get it to come off cleanly. Yeah, otherwise it will start. If it, if you do like a nice thin coat of it, it's just going to crumble and turn into mess yeah so i used it right on the banner for that night lord that i'm painting the banner's obviously attached um and the banner's white on the original og artwork so i'd obviously got the really lovely sort of purpley blue on the armor and everything that when i first put it on i just i was like right okay i should have sprayed the banner first really should have done that and then i could have just marked, covered the banner over but i was already up you know in that position where i obviously i had to had to then um then paint the paint the the, the, the banner set for as once the model's painted. So I literally just cling filmed all the way around the model and pulled it tight around the bottom of the banner pole, pulled it really tight, pushed it all in so there's no gaps with a, with a, with a clay shaper uh, and then airbrushed it white, pulled it off. Perfect. I think that's genius. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Yeah. I've got one more. I've got one more. I mean, you're on a roll. But one more. This is either going to ruin it or add to it. This one was a fluke discovery. Is when, right, and you so, get a toothbrush. No, and, <laughs> no, electric one, John. No, no electric toothbrush in this. So um, so we all paint like models that have got separate heads and things like that. Um, and, and I like painting bare heads separately. 
and doing all the skin by airbrush or if you do paint it with a brush you paint it separately and then obviously attach the head to the model once it's once it's painted on that note i think one of my favorite quotes from you was that you used a head rotisserie oh head rotisserie if anyone who wants to know it's one of the, the humble shot glasses with loads of holes drilled in it two mil uh bits of co copper pot uh copper rod or uh, the thicker paper big clip. paper, paper bits. Glue them all in with super glue, and then you just drill holes in the bottom of the heads, and you've got like a lovely. That's another hobby hack. He's, yeah. he's flying through yeah, these. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it really it's is Christmas the season, it's season of giving. giving. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So um, there's not going to be like twenty. It's not like a, like an advent. Right, tier list. Yeah, twenty tips. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> the, the, this last one is is happened. We by should do apps. like the <laughs> twelve days of Christmas like song versus James like singing, <laughs> no. singing different hats. There is you do not want to be singing. Trust me. <laughs> Um, so, so this last one happened by pure fluke and it was something that I, I literally, it was because I was at the desk when I was sitting and I was trying to work out how best to do this. Um, and it was before the cling film actually, um, I had something next to me, which then a light bulb came on. Um, I had a metal model or a model that had the head attached and it was a bare head. Now, obviously I want to paint, um, paint the skin on the flesh, uh, of the face. Um, so uh, I was like, how am I going to do this? Like, you know, I want to airbrush it to get it nice and smooth and do all the sort of different tones and stuff I'm doing on the skin, et cetera, blah, blah, blah. Um, and I was like, I don't really know how I'm going to do this without overspraying too much on the model. And obviously metal models, they, it was quite a decent cast metal model, but you don't want to put too many thick layers of paint on there anyway to obscure detail or, you know, anything. So well, how am I going to do this? And I conveniently looked to my left and there was a hole punch. So, so. I'll see where this is going. What? What I did was made the model a bib. And what I had convinced, done was got the corner of the bit of paper, hole punched the corner, and then I put the head through the hole that I'd hole punched on the bit of paper. So you went to the barber shop. Yeah, you barber shop. fully, yeah. Yep. And then I managed to airbrush it all the, from all the tones and colors and angles and et cetera, et cetera. I took the bib off. I hate what a good idea and, and this it is. Had, yeah. And it had, it had a tiny little bleed area around the bottom of the neck, but I just tidied up and that was it. So yeah, also genius. Yeah. It's brilliant. Yeah, I hate it when he comes up with good so ideas because I can't rip it. I can't yeah, rip it for it's, uh, it. <laughs> yeah, these hobby hacks are like buses. You wait for ages for a good one, and then yeah. two come along at once. Yeah, I've yeah. been saving them for Christmas. Cheeky little special for you all. So yeah, yeah, yeah. that's right. what, they're very good. They're yeah. both very good. Yeah, yeah. So, so solid. Cling film, cling film, Tupperware, and the whole punch will be on everyone's Christmas list. So yeah, so there, there you go. go. Merry Stationary Christmas. supplies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, mine is we've spoken to death right about the homemade wet palette thing which i'm not going to get into right because it's hobby hacks right i would just stay and caveat that if you are someone who is using a wet palette like a pre-manufactured one like any one of them you know the ones ditch the paper it come with or the packs of paper that you buy and just get a roll of baking paper from the supermarket cut up to the same size it will work wonders for you. The paper is much more absorbent. It's much easier to work with. It's a nice slick surface. It will make big gains for you without having to go down this whole avenue of buying Tupperware. I'm going to go one step further. Uh -huh. The thing that I use, and I haven't had to restock it for a long time, I got like a, a um, multi-pack thing of pre-cut sheets of that, of um, baking paper. Not It wasn't for... Uh, wet palettes I think they're like A3 um, sheets right um, off of Amazon and when I cut them in half they're pretty much the perfect size for my Tupperware right. um, that I, I, for whatever reason the fact I think maybe that they're stored just flat already they're not rolled up I've just had better, better lift but yeah I've had yeah. better, better luck see when I pre-cut mine from the baking paper I you put, then just flatten I them put, all out. I flatten them all out and I put them in like a plastic sleeve. Funny enough, I put them in the sleeve that the original palette paper came in. <laughs> and I store them in there. And because they're like sat flat and I cut like a whole roll at a time. So it lasts me like six months. Yeah. Like, so you're kind of the same thing. The, it's, yeah. It, yeah. The, them rolling up isn't really a factor anymore. Yeah. I think, yeah, I never really did that. But then I got the, I haven't, I haven't had to buy any for ages. It was like a massive, it was like a tenner. Yeah. It was like a massive amount of uh, sheets of yeah. paper. There you go. Yeah. Well, uh, my thoughts on 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 wet they're, they're very well documented. I won't even but, let James but, answer. But, but all, all, I will add on one thing, which is is that all that matters TK is that Max or something. No, probably, I'm not. Stip, I'm not spouting any of that today. All I'm going to literally just say is that all that matters is that 
the paint behaves in a way on that palette that you can that you can quantify. I said because there are certain behavioural characteristics on baking sheet which no other paper that I've used or tried, be it a preordained manufactured one or be it a, a, another type of wet palette paper, or whatever. Um, they don't. Nothing ever behaves the way that it does on on that baking sheet because of the way that it, it is. Um, so I think you, you should definitely try it. See how the paint behaves on there, and then and then go make a decision. Basically, I think because I used like a pre-manufactured one that comes with all the sheets, I thought like, why on earth would I bother using baking paper? Yeah, like, yeah. I've already got all this paper, but well, like it behaves so differently. Of course, it does. Yeah, 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 yeah. Cool. So uh, we was pinning something earlier, and Jane, Pin it, pinning something. Yeah, pinning something, putting it back together, yep. something that broke, and uh, just doing like a normal sub assembly of a pin. James was using paper clips and I sort of made fun of him. I was like, oh, why don't we get some like proper brass rod or whatever? Just sort of, uh, you know, having a riff. I, I use paper clips. To yeah, that's fine. I've got, I've got no, yeah. got no problems with paper clips. He knows. Yeah. Got no problems with paper clips. I was just making a little, uh, it's a little joke. And then James pointed out something to me that I've never noticed before. So you know how paper clips, the colored ones, they've got like, like sort of enamel coating on yeah, them, right? Like a rubberized plastic. Rubberized plastic. James, do you want to, uh, do you want to tail off this? Well, uh, you can, you can, Get some pliers or some of your really good clippers, and you just like on, like you would if you're cutting a wire or if you're doing wiring in a house or electrical work or whatever. You just cut, take off that enamel and just slide that off the off the thing. Mm -hmm. You cut that into little tubes. That's a uh, perfect uh, shell casings for your, uh, for your ah, basin. Very nice because they're hard plastic. They're perfect for for using as shell casings if you cut them down to size. I suppose as well if you didn't have any paper clips, you had a for whatever reason, you had a bunch of like 24 AWG wire laying around. <laughs> yeah, you could probably yeah. do the same thing. But uh, yeah, yeah. You probably so. don't want to encourage everyone to just go and do like wire stripping around the house to get some. No, we don't some... offer <laughs> electrical guidance on this podcast. Yeah, um, yeah. This is not electronic advice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 It is paint perspective yeah. as an episode. Yeah. But yeah, that's can... pretty good. It's a good yeah. tip, though, isn't it? Because yeah. yeah. it's already like hollowed out as well. Yeah. It's not, you're not just dealing with like, you could do that with like a bit of brass wire, yeah. but it's not going to be hollowed. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it, yeah, it works. Like really, it works really good as like a shell casing, which is quite cool. So, so yeah. Same was way. that said? Was it? Was James trying to justify his use of paper clips, and then he said that as like, a, oh, and you can do this with them. Yeah. Or was that? Yeah. 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 yeah perfect. Then I'd uh, never occurred to me. So yeah. And yeah. paper clips are a lot cheaper than put you in rod. your place. Then didn't yeah. It? Every day's a learning day. 